Do you have a med school interview coming up? Are you an eager pre-med trying to prepare for this years in advance? Well, this is the video for you. I'll be sharing my top 10 tips that helped me get into med school. So be sure to watch the entire video for tips and tricks and resources that you can take home with you. Stay tuned. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. For those who are new here, my name is Tahir Daruja. I'm a first year medical student at the University of Western Ontario Schulich School of Medicine and Dentistry. All right, I don't have a watch, but I know it's been a while. And I promise I'll be releasing a lot more videos in the future on a more regular schedule, hopefully every week. But I've been getting used to this whole scheduling thing and resolution stuff. But I promise I'll be releasing a lot more video and more content coming up ahead. But in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my top 10 interview tips. But I feel like these tips can just go past the med school interview. I think these are tips that might help you in, in daily interactions with humans. And I refer to them as humans because, you know, I'm not. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so let's get into this video. Tip number one. Reflect on your application. When you write your autobiographical sketch, you have to describe each event in less than 200 words. That's not a lot to describe what you learned from that event, why you did it, or how you can see it being used in the field of medicine. That's what the interviewer is actually looking for, not whether you did research or, you know, I shadowed a physician. But why did you do those things? What did you learn from it? What skills did you gain? Did you face any troubles? Or how could you see this being applied in medicine? Or how does it relate to medicine in general? Tip number two, review the CanMed roles and apply at least one of them to each of your activities in your autobiographical sketch. You see, the CanMed roles are a bunch of transferable skills that med schools expect out of a physician. Anyone can get these skills. So what I want you to do is Go through your application, see when was a time I was a communicator, or advocate, or professional, or any time that the CanMed roles apply, and write those down beside uh, the event that you've done in your autobiographical sketch. Tip number three, go with the flow. It's a lot easier said than done, but having an interview is a lot like a road trip with someone. You have a destination in mind, you're driving, and then someone says they need to use the washroom. So what do you do? Do you stop, panic, and go in the middle of the road. No, you take your time going on the way to your destination and then go to the rest stop that you first see. In an interview, the final destination is you finishing that interview. Whatever happens in between is like a rest stop. When a person asks you a question that throws you off guard, take some time, take a rest. That's perfectly normal. And think about it and answer the question and continue on with your journey. Tip number four. Be genuine. We all know those professors when they go off on a tangent and they start talking about things that you don't really care about, like their kids. But something to notice about their behavior is they're completely different when they lecture versus when they talk about those things. So they talk a lot more with their hands, they talk a lot more with emotion, they talk with their eyes, and you can tell they're a lot more genuine about it and you realize that they're human and vulnerable because they're sharing these things with you guys. So in an interview, you want to be that person. You want to be genuine. You want to be the person who talks about things they're passionate about and talks about things that they love because it really does show. Tip number five, tell a story. Not only does this make you a much more interesting person to talk to, but it helps you structure your answers to questions. Check out the hero's journey. It's the foundation on pretty much most stories are told. Here's how I would use the hero's journey in answering an interview question. Number one, I'd start out with a moment that would help me answer that question. Number two, I'd face a problem. Number three, what I did or who helped me solve that problem. Number four, I'd figure out what was the result and what I learned from that event. Number five, and bonus points, how I could relate it in medicine. Tip number six, practice with people you've never met before or people you're not very familiar with. Think about it. Who are the people you're interviewing with? Is it your friends or your family or people that know your mannerisms or your stories or how you behave in certain events? No, it's someone you've never met before, a stranger. So how do you get better with talking to strangers? You talk to strangers, simple as that. Maybe, I don't know, go on a date or something like that. Put in your Tinder profile. Practicing for med school interviews, please go out. Uh, something like that. Something that will help you be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Tip number seven, ask for feedback. Before you start your practice interview, ask the person you're gonna interview with if they can give you any feedback on how you did, what you could improve on, what to watch out for. 
because people are more than happy to help you out with these things and they want you to succeed. So don't be afraid to ask them. Tip number eight, and probably the most important one of all, accepting feedback. This was something that I definitely had trouble with the most. You have to put your ego aside at the times because you know, when people give us feedback, sometimes we get to be defensive and say, explain ourselves why we did those things. And that's normal, that's natural but it will really set you apart in the future and help you in med school because med school is all about receiving feedback and learning and always wanting to grow and better yourself. So accept feedback, put your ego aside. Think about it like this. In a soccer game, you see a soccer player shoot the ball when he had a clear pass and you're like sitting there, why didn't you pass it? Like it was clearly open. That's very similar to feedback. The person who is playing the game may have not seen that pass, but it was obvious to the observer. So when you do this whole feedback process, remember that whatever the person says is valid. They see something in you, whether it is true or not, that is up to you to decide, but it is something that they saw and might want you to look out for in the future. Tip number nine, talk to med students or doctors because who better to ask than someone who's went through it before. And for those of you out there who are thinking, I don't have a med student or doctor to talk to, you have me. I'm someone who is more than happy to answer your questions. Send me an email or drop a comment down below and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Tip number 10, do your research. Always look at the university you're applying to. I mean, we've all creeped that one person on Facebook before, or at least multiple, but why don't you apply that to the university you're about to spend a lot of your life in and learn so much from? Find out why you're applying to this place. Find out what you like about this place and what appeals to you and why you're applying to it. Because that might be a potential question they might ask you. If someone knows about you more, you're more likely to like them than someone who doesn't know about you. So you reached the end of the video. Here are a bunch of resources that might help you in your interview process and just life in general. So number one, I'm gonna give you a big list of interview questions. So search that up on Google. That really helped me a lot in anticipating what questions might come up and help me get to know myself a lot better and prepare myself for practice interviews and the answers that I want to give or stories that I want to tell. Number two, read the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. He goes through a lot of great examples and anecdotes and how to influence people and maybe get people on your side because at the end of the day, when you're applying to med school, you're going to be an influencer. As a physician, you're going to influence people's lifestyle choices into making them more healthier and live longer. These are things that require a lot of good traits in a person. And number three, have fun. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on my socials, subscribe, smash that like button, comment what you wanna see in the future, take chances, make mistakes, and put the L in learning. And I hope to see you next time. Peace.